Hey, what's up, YouTube people? So, I got a request to make an overclocking video and how to use um, Ryzen Master. So, here's Ryzen Master from the homepage on it uh, with stock settings. Well, actually, no, it's, it's set to something else right now, but it'll look relatively like this when you open it up. Here is all of your cores. And the numbers that you see on the cores are the frequency that they are running at. When you bought your CPU on the box, you're, you're probably aware of how your core count and the stock frequency that they're rated to run at. So to keep this video short, you're just going to have to trust me that when you have it set to stock settings and you run a test, it will go just to whatever the frequency rating stock is. Um, so that's where overclocking comes in, is that you can go in here and drag this green bar and set it to a higher number, and the CPU will try and boost to that frequency. And the, um, the change in frequency, you can almost think about it as a, uh, like a, like a chainsaw just moving faster. It will tear through the data processing quicker because it's just moving faster. So, um... Normally, these ones won't be numbers. One will be called Creator Mode, one will be called Gamer Mode, one will be called Profile 1, and then Profile 2. Um, these two, I haven't changed the number on, so these two are both set to 3800 because that's the stock frequency of my CPU. The way you go about overclocking is, first you start with voltage, and you want to go and look up forms of people who have overclocked your CPU before and copy the settings that they do. So start off with a base overclock value that you know works, that other people have tried. So for example, on mine, for some reason, stock voltage is like somewhere around 1.35 or something. Don't worry about what the number means. We're just going to work with we're just going to work with the number. So I can run a test on this to run an example. This is set to 4,000. It's 200 above the stock frequency, which really isn't, you know, it's really nothing. But it's down to 1.25 volts, which is low. And if I run a test on this, it produces... Well, here's sign bench. So here's sign, here's sign bench, and this is how you test out your scores. So the numbers, I don't really know how they come up with the numbers, but this image here will be parceled out and rendered, but not with your GPU, just with your CPU. And then you'll get your scores over here. This lower score is when I'm locked into 4,000 gigahertz. This one is when I'm locked into... 4,400. Now, this CPU should be able to hit 4,500, um, but it's real finicky about it. Uh, I've done it once, and I almost got to 20,000, but I almost got to 20,000 just now with 4,400, and it's much more stable, and it doesn't actually cause that much of a heat spike. Um, but that moves us on to the next topic of overclocking is heat. Um, so voltage is relatively easy to work with because they don't really allow you to overvolt this thing because if I highlight it here, you'll see 1.55 volts is the maximum. Now, I've had this at 1.5 with 4,500 um, gigahertz going. I've gotten one test to work out of it. Every other time, sign bench restarts and uh, potentially your computer could restart. What you have to worry about is overvolting it too quickly and not having enough cooling to, um, to deal with that. And the way you want to go about finding that sweet spot where you actually get good overclocking and you don't overvolt and you don't overheat is that you step up in voltage about zero, I mean, 0 0.05. So if this is point, if this is 1.25, you would go up to 1.3 and then you'd run a test and then you'd go up to 1.35 and then run a test. But you wouldn't change the frequency and the voltage at the same time. What you would do is, is you would bring the voltage down to 1.25 like this, 
and then you would keep cranking up the frequency until the test didn't work anymore. And then you would crank up the voltage and then rerun the test. And that's a safer way of going about it so you're not pushing the voltage ahead of the frequency and, you know, senselessly putting, you know, it's just, it, you know, it's dangerous. But, um, so here comes cooling. So make sure that you have some kind of UI for whatever cooling solution you have. If you have air cooling, if you have water cooling, watch your temperatures. So what you do is, is you, you get a voltage, you get a frequency, you run a test, and you watch your, you watch your CPU temperature. Now, if it gets into the 70s, the mid 70s, 75, 80, then that's getting near, because throttling starts happening around 80, 85, 90. And then after that, you get damage. So if you're well below that, if, well, you know, if you're in the 80 range, you're in a functional range. Um, that's the, the, I don't know, the consensus, I, I would believe, from what I've seen around. And I've experienced it myself as I've been doing benchmarks in those temperature ranges with these voltages for a while. I haven't seen any issues with them. Everything's been stable. So, for example here, if you start out, let's use this one as our, as our guinea pig. So I'm going to go in here. I have clicked this left thing here. And that locks all these in together. You can go in here and... Uh, disable cores or you can disable a whole column of six um let me try and see how to do that that's how you do it right there is activate ccd mode i don't really know what that stands for but when you activate it from when you go from one to two it gives you it gives you six on one and it gives you 12 on two um there's a reason for that i couldn't really explain it in some instances, you'll get more performance. Um, something it's it's actually more into extreme overclocking, which I wouldn't suggest with these more typical cooling solutions like water cooling and air cooling. That's more getting into other like, extreme overclocking things. Um, when you get into like these six core things, I don't I don't really know the reasoning for that. But um, so move it up or down a hundred. You know, 3,000, 3,500, 3,800. Now, um, this would be this would be a more pushing it kind of space for me. It's 4,450 because that's getting to where I sometimes have instabilities. So let's apply that and then let's pull up the cooling solution. Put that right about right about there. We'll keep the camera on it. And I'm going to hit start. We can kind of see this render happen a little bit. But I'm also going to... And see right there? Computer restarted. So, 4450 was unstable right now. But there you go. You get to kind of see what happens live. When, you, you know, you discover, oh, that's unstable. So as you can see, everything's fine computers restarting but if you pay close attention when things like that happen you'll also notice that the temperature didn't spike that much and because the temperature didn't spike that much that means you didn't fry the cpu what happened was is it just was unstable at that frequency now i can't really explain the relationship there because it seems like it's a cooling solution thing but in my theory, it's not a cooling solution problem. It's just an instability problem. I don't know if it's something incompatible. If it's, I, I really don't know what that is once you get into something like that. Because if you go and you watch, say, liquid nitrogen cooled overclocks, you will notice that they go into, they'll take um, the same CPU I have, which is a 3900X, a 12 core 3900X, and they overclock it to about five gigahertz with liquid nitrogen cooling and um you know so it, sh it, it kind of shows a direct relationship between cooling and um stability 
So this is the one I, I set to 4,500 at 1 1.25. So the problem here isn't temperature, it's that I had such a high frequency and not enough voltage. This is too much horsepower with not enough gas. This engine just stalled because of this. Now, if I was to go and, well, the frequency might be too high as well, but that's not what we're gonna zero in on. So I'm gonna set this back to 4,000 because that's, I use this profile for that. I wish this was a lot less sensitive. Whatever, I'll change that later. Anyways, here's a different profile I have set up that's a stable profile for 4,400 gigahertz at 1.4 volts. So I kept walking up the frequency until it was unstable, and then I walked up the voltage until this frequency was stable. So we'll apply this. We'll open up Sidebench. We'll open up the cooling solution so we can watch that go up and down. All right, so now we're gonna start a test. Pull up the cooling solution. So you can see we're getting into 70, 72. See now this is an acceptable temperature for being under a benchmark. Oh, hold on a second. This is set in the wrong mode. It was set to run for 10 minutes. Something I thought was interesting. And I could, eh, I think I might be wrong about this. At first I used to think that those squares were the cores, but I think there's too many of them. And I think there's way more than 12. 75, 76. Again, still within acceptable ranges because this is actually the top top end of the, the uh, frequency I can push this thing to. So there you go. 1900 or 19,460. So now let's step it down. Because being locked into a high, and this is kind of a separate lesson that I want to put at the end of this video, is that overclocking is really only useful for a few applications that I've noticed. One is benchmarks. The other is possibly maintaining high compression on, not a compression, but doing streaming while gaming. I think it has a benefit. Um, other than that, I don't think it has much of a benefit because when I put in 4,400 gigahertz and I do a benchmark with a game and I do 4,000 gigahertz, I don't notice a difference. There's not a change in FPS. We have a dramatically lower voltage here. So I would suggest actually undervolting the stock, bring it down to 125 or whatever is stable and low and, um, a, a moderate frequency, something that keeps your PC running at a good temperature. And um, that's something that you'll find in the other video I have about regulating the temperature on the 3900X. Um, because the CPU will spike up to about 50C while doing simple tasks like browsing around through your um, files, opening up pictures, opening up programs and things like that. And as you can see here, I've set it to 4,000 at 125 and look at the CPU temperature now. It's at a stable 34 with these particular fan curves that I have set up, which I'm comfortable with. The pump I have at about 75% most of the time, a little higher, about 83. And, um, and then it maxes out if we get over 60 C. And then the fan's a lot lower, but it has a similar curve to it. And with these curves 
it keeps it right there and I don't have a lot of noise to deal with. So that wraps up how to overclock with the Ryzen, how to think about how to walk up incrementally with uh, frequency and uh, voltage, how to uh, monitor your cooling to make sure that you're not overheating or overvolting your CPU. Um, these are the applications that you will use in order to monitor and, you know, and uh, benchmark it and see what you're doing. And uh, a little bit of common sense about how to apply your overclocking and how to increase the longevity of your CPU because overclocking isn't always needed for everyday tasks. It's more of a benchmark tool. Anyways, have a good one, and I hope this has been useful for you guys. See ya.